Because of time dilation, observers moving at a constant velocity relative to each other measure different time intervals between two events. For instance, using the time dilation equation, a trip in a spacecraft from Earth to Alpha Centauri at a speed of v equals 0.95 c would take 4.5 years according to a clock on Earth, but only 1.4 years according to a clock in the spacecraft. These two times differ by the factor 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. Since the times for the trip are different, one might ask whether the observers measure different distances between Earth and Alpha Centauri. The answer, according to special relativity, is yes. After all, both the Earth-based observer and the rocket passenger agree that, in this case, the relative speed between the rocket and Earth is v equals 0.95 c. Since the speed is distance divided by time, and the time is different for the two observers, it follows that the distances must also be different. To illustrate the effect, consider a ship moving through space at some significant fraction of the speed of light relative to Earth. An observer on the ship measures the ship's length to be some length, the proper length. An observer on the Earth, however, sees something a little different. The ship looks shorter. Its length is contracted. From the point of view of the observer on the ship, however, the Earth is moving in the opposite direction at the same speed, and the Earth looks compressed again contracted in length along the line of motion. The relation between the distances measured by two observers in relative motion at a constant velocity can be obtained by examining the trip to Alpha Centauri. From the point of view of the Earth-based observer, the time of the trip is delta t, the distance from Earth to Alpha Centauri is L0. From the point of view of the passenger on the ship, for whom the rocket is at rest, the Earth and Alpha Centauri appear to move by at a speed v. The passenger on the ship determines the time to be delta t0 and the distance of the trip to be l. For the Earth-based observer, l0 equals v times delta t, or v equals l0 divided by delta t. For the observer on the ship, l equals v times delta t0, or v equals l divided by delta t0. One thing, other than the speed of light, that the two observers can agree upon is the relative speed v between them. And we can write l divided by delta t0 equals l0 divided by delta t. We can rearrange this to give l equals l0 times delta t0 divided by delta t. Using the time dilation equation to substitute for delta t, we obtain the following. Canceling delta t0 in the numerator and denominator, we have l equals l0 times the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared, which is the length contraction equation. l0 is the proper length, which is the length or distance between two points as measured by an observer at rest with respect to them. l is the contracted length between two points as measured by an observer moving at a speed v with respect to them. Since the term 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared is always less than or equal to 1, l is always less than or equal to l0. Consider a short example. An observer on a cylindrical spacecraft measures the length and diameter of the craft to be 82 meters and 21 meters, respectively. If the ship moves at a speed of v equal to 0.95 c relative to Earth, what are the dimensions of the spacecraft as measured by an Earth-based observer? First, note that the diameter will be the same, at 21 meters, since the length contraction only occurs in the direction of motion. For the length contraction in the line of motion, we apply the length contraction formula, L equals L0 times the square root of 1 minus V squared divided by C squared. With L0 equal to 82 meters and V equal to 0.95 C, we have L equals 82 meters times the square root of 1 minus 0.95 c divided by c squared, which is equal to 26 meters, significantly shorter than the proper length.